Welcome to our channel. We hope you will have a wonderful learning experience here with us. You can download and listen to these audiobooks at your preferred time. Our videos are designed as audio podcasts to help you keep studying at times where you may not be able to watch video or as you are completing another task so you can better use your time. You can listen to these tutorials at night, doing another task, while taking a walk, lunchtime or at your convenience. This is the first part of freshman biology course taught in all the Ethiopian universities. It is tailored exactly to the fitting of the Ethiopian Ministry of Education curriculum but is also very useful for any related course. I am very happy you have chosen this channel in your study and politely ask that you subscribe, like and share the channel for more amazing tutorials. Now, without further ado let's begin our course. Chapter On Meaning and Scope of Biology Biological sciences is the study of life and living organisms. It is also called as biology. The Greek word bio which means means life and logos which means study of. In the late 1700s Pierre Antoine de Monet and Jean Baptiste de Lamarck coined the term biology. Earlier study of living things was restricted to the pure science like botany and zoology that together comprise the biology. But as the time passed new branches evolved. New technologies developed in pure subjects as well as in applied fields, which gave rise to a very broad concept of science called biological sciences. Biological sciences is an extensive study covering the minute workings of chemical substances inside living cells to the broad scale concepts of ecosystems and global environmental changes. It is also concerned with the physical characteristics and behaviors of organisms living today and long ago. How they came into existence and what relation they possess with each other and their environments. Intimate study of details of the human brain, the composition of our genes, and even the functioning of our reproductive system are dealt in biological sciences. Therefore, biology is the science of living things. That is why biology is sometimes known as life science. The life sciences can be defined as a systematic study of living beings or study of nature. Teaching of life science basically deals with providing information about the latest developments in the field of biological sciences all over the world. The Origin and Nature of Life One of the biggest and most important of emergent phenomena is that of the origin or emergence of life. The mystery of life's origin is still a big debating issue in science. The question what is life? Is so hard to answer we really want to know much more than what it is, we want to know why it is, we are really asking, in physical terms, why a specific material system is an organism and not something else. To answer this why question we need to understand how life might have originated. There are a number of theories about the origin of life. The next few sections give emphasis on these different theories about the origin of life. The evolution of life on Earth has involved the following sequence of events. The first living things to appear were the simplest creatures, single-celled organisms. From these came more complex, multicellular organisms. Becoming more complex meant more than just an increase in cell number but more cells showed cellular specialization, where certain cells within the multicellular organism carried out specific tasks. Millions, even billions of years of changes of organisms led to the living things we now call plants and animals. Since this basic sequence of events is in accord with that agreed upon by most geologists, paleontologists, 
biologists, and even theologians, one might conclude that Moses, Aristotle, and Darwin were all keen observers and naturalists who were able to logically assess the most probable creation story. Scientists generally concur that the time from the formation of our solar system until now has been on the order of some 4.5 billion years. Those who believe the world as we know it was created in six days are often called creationists. Their method of inquiry is based on the belief that the Bible is to be accepted as a completely accurate accounting of all about which it speaks. Scientists, on the other hand, utilize what they call the scientific method, which allows them to test hypotheses and theories and to develop concepts and ideas. Several attempts have been made from time to time to explain the origin of life on Earth. As a result, there are several theories which offer their own explanation on the possible mechanism of origin of life. Following are some of them. 1. Theory of Special Creation According to this theory, all the different forms of life that occur today on planet Earth have been created by God, the Almighty. Theory of Spontaneous Generation this theory assumed that living organisms could arise suddenly and spontaneously from any kind of non-living matter. One of the firm believers in spontaneous generation was Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, 384-322 BC. 2. Dot theory of catastrophism, it is simply a modification of the theory of special creation. It states that there have been several creations of life by God, each preceded by a catastrophe resulting from some kind of geological disturbance. According to this theory, since each catastrophe completely destroyed the existing life, each new creation consisted of life form different from that of previous ones. 3. Cosmozoic Theory, Theory of Panspermia According to this theory, life has reached this planet Earth from other heavenly bodies such as meteorites, in the form of highly resistant spores of some organisms. This idea was proposed by Richter in 1865 and supported by Arrhenius, 1908, and other contemporary scientists. The theory did not gain any support. This theory lacks evidence. Hence it was discarded. 4. Theory of Chemical Evolution This theory is also known as Materialistic Theory or Physico-Chemical Theory. According this theory, origin of life on Earth is the result of a slow and gradual process of chemical evolution that probably occurred about 3.8 billion years ago. This theory was proposed independently by two scientists, one A. I. Oparin, a Russian scientist in 1923 and J. B. S. Haldane, an English scientist, in 1928. Nature and Characteristics of Life Life is defined as a condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic materials and dead organisms. Life is comprised of processes and is a maintained state. The most sophisticated form of life is man. As a result of this, we focus upon the nature of the life and death of man. Man demonstrates three lives or aspects of life. 1. Life of the body, physical. 2. Life of the mind and 3. Life of the spirit. Physical life is basic existence. Mind contributes effectiveness and scope. Spiritual entity contributes maximum living. Physiology, the existence of life physical is demonstrated by the presence of functions. Common characteristics of living organisms Living tissues and organisms exhibit irritability. Irritability is the ability to be excited or detect stimuli and to respond thereto. Growth and reproduction 
growth and reproduction consists of the power of multiplication and duplication, regeneration and differentiation adaptability. Adaptability is the capability of permitting both change and maintenance of balances, homeostasis. Finally and most characteristic of all is metabolism, the transformation of energy and the use of materials. These properties, however, can be retained for a while by tissues after death of the organism so there is another mystery of life which we understand only in part. Excretion Excretion and osmorgulation regulation are two important homeostatic processes occurring in living cells, helping them to maintain a constant internal environment, or steady state. Excretion is the removal from the cell of waste products of metabolism. In plant cells the major excretory products are oxygen from photosynthesis and carbon dioxide from cell respiration. The scientific method The scientific method is a process for experimentation that is used to explore observations and answer questions. It is an empirical method of acquiring knowledge. It is also the technique used in the construction and testing of a scientific hypothesis. The scientific method has five basic steps, plus one feedback step. The first step is making an observation. Second, asking question. Then, forming hypothesis. Making predictions based on the hypothesis finally test the prediction and iterating the results. Let's look at the steps in tail. The first step observation is quantitative and qualitative measurements of the world. Inference is deriving new knowledge based upon old knowledge. The suggested explanations are called hypotheses. An explanation that has been ruled out through experimentation is the rejected hypothesis. On the other hand, an explanation that has not been ruled out through excessive experimentation and makes verifiable predictions that are true is called accepted hypothesis. A test that is used to rule out a hypothesis or validate something already known is called experiment. The process of scientific investigation is scientific method. The theory is the widely accepted hypothesis that stands the test of time. Often tested, and usually never rejected. The scientific method is based primarily on the testing of hypotheses by experimentation. This involves a control, or subject that does not undergo the process in question. A scientist will also seek to limit variables to one or another very small number, single or minimum number of variables. The procedure is to form a hypothesis or prediction about what you believe or expect to see and then do everything you can to violate that, or falsify the hypotheses. Although this may seem unintuitive, the process serves to establish more firmly what is and what is not true. In summary the scientific method are listed in steps as, Step 1, Observe behavior or other phenomena Step 2, Form a tentative answer or explanation, a hypothesis, guess a reason. Step 3, use your hypothesis to generate a testable prediction. Step 4, make systematic, planned observations, data collection. Step 5, results and discussion, use the observations to evaluate, support, refute, or refine, the original hypothesis. Step 6, conclusion. Step 7, recommendation. This was all about Chapter 1 of Freshman Biology course. We have covered definition of the term biology, explanation of the scientific methods and the origin and the nature of life. Until we meet in the next session a broken bar a broken bar. Good luck.